Hi, everybody. My name is Nicole Alvarez. Welcome to Radio.com's DTS Sound Space. I'm broadcasting from my house, but we're going to hang out and chat with my friend Machine Gun Kelly. I'm going to start by, by saying that I'm a fan, so I'm going to make this pretty awesome. And everything that I ask you is going to come from this conversation is coming from the heart. And these are things that I want to know. Um, for example, first time I ever laid eyes on you it had nothing to do with music. It was in roadies. And it's hard not to immediately fall in love with a character like Wes, right? And the second time I ever saw you was a video on the internet of you singing to your daughter. So I was like, this is an awesome human being. Then I found out that on a separate timeline, you were this massively successful rapper, which blew my mind. So fast forward to now, I've been a fan for a really long time. And I'm watching you be insanely successful at everything you do. And what my first question is, how old were you when you figured out that you were not one thing or another, that your path was actually many. I realized when I would like watch movies and go to school, trying to be like characters in movies or something like that was when I realized I didn't have a solid foundation in my home life to follow after. So I was just kind of idolizing whoever was in my headphones or was in front of me on like the TV or in magazines. So, I mean, probably when I wanted to be a, a Jedi. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I wanted to be a stormtrooper, dude. Yeah. Like, I wanted to be a stormtrooper. Okay, so I'm gonna follow that up with, you're such a, I call people like you the universe, and I'll explain. You're so multi-dimensional. You harness the energy of the universe in a way that's explosive. Like you carry that with you, which means if you hold it in, it'll destroy you. So people like you that I call the universe, what you end up doing is you create. And I want to know how you know when to focus on just one thing. When do you know it's time to act? When do you know it's time to direct? When do you know it's time to sing? When do you know it's time to just be not Machine Gun Kelly? How do you focus? The cool thing about that in regards to what the future holds is that I haven't done that yet. So I haven't focused all of my energy into one thing yet. Um, so even if you think I'm good at multiple I haven't yet given the world a version of me where I only focus on directing or acting or or just music because it seems like I, I just haven't accessed that part of my um patience yet and so I'm excited for that to open up and to see what can actually come from I'll give you an example of what was pure okay. focus take us to my downfall that was all me focusing on one thing so that that actually was the first example of me doing that so because that felt super focused i yeah yeah the the album itself is such i don't know i i always wonder how an artist feels when you go back and it's been some time and you listen to to the to the album from front to back i listened to it this morning on a hike to get into you know to get into the zone and it's such a complete work and to me it seems so focused granted there's so many emotions involved but it does seem so focused like you put all of you in there i could feel it so i bet you're excited to see when your patience gets you to the point that you really can focus by your standards that's got to be exciting as hell like what next level you could reach it's exciting though to watch that's my fifth album, Take Us to My Downfall. It's exciting to watch that be the most well-received. And actually, even the album before that, Hotel Diablo, that was then my most well-received. So it seems like the Benjamin Button curse in music, and that's like the best case scenario because the most of the people I watch, it's their first and second albums are where they say everything and the interest falls off as a fan after the third, fourth, fifth album. And I mean, yeah. most people don't even get to a fifth album. So, I mean, the fact right. that that was what has catapulted me into whatever realm we're in now is like blowing my mind. And, and to know that I haven't made my best work yet has given me a lot of hope. You posted something a few weeks ago on your Instagram story and you said it was so honest. You said, mind you, this is seemingly you're king of the prom and all of these things are going right. But in the story, you said something like you've been in a funk and looking from the outside in, you would never imagine that somebody like you is in a funk because 
to everybody else, you're on top of the world. I think it is such a beautiful thing to be able to be that honest and vulnerable. Why is it important to you? Or what encourages you to keep being so honest? Because you are, and it's magnificent. And I hope you stay that way. Well, I find myself going in intervals because a lot of the times I will just polish myself up. We all do. And I will just put on a smile and I'll know that when an achievement happens, the fans and the family that I built around me are the reasons why that achievement even happened. So I kind of owe them that smile and that excitement, even though right before I go to accept it, I might just be feeling like this is my moment to go out there and just be honest with everybody. Like I'm not doing okay. Or like, you know, so instead I do just suck it up and go perform. And I don't mean literally musically perform cause I'm always down to like release myself there, but no, I'll I get it. Like smile and polish myself up. But that one video, uh, I mean, it's funny that you mentioned that because I also deleted that video. It stayed uh -oh. with me, though. It stayed with me because you had a human moment. And I felt, you know, you scroll on social media and somebody like me that's not like, you know, successful like you. I'm successful in my own right. But I have days that everybody seems like they're they're all conquering their dreams. And then I see somebody that I admire, that I'm a fan of, that had an honest moment. And I feel so connected that it gets me out of my funk. So you, it's kind of magic. Honesty is magic that way. That honest moment was just coming from me being like, all right, I'll, I'll smile and do all that stuff when it is time for me to get on camera. But I haven't been active on social media for months. And I just had a moment of kind of explaining to everybody why I wasn't active on there, because that is the only way that I can be interact with my fans, even though they don't know that I go and see what they're saying to me all the time and like what they're what they're feeling about the projects or the music that I'm making. Like I always am looking at what they're saying, but I'm not acknowledging it. I think it's a smart move to step away from the machine every once in a while and to not engage. It's that to me is self-preservation. I am, um, right. I admire, yeah. so I admire so much about you and you have, it's funny how you see yourself and then how, how other people like perceive us. For example, like, you, you still keep going. That's the whole thing, which is a, a, amazing about you. You So the way that I watch you live is it's almost like you're on borrowed time. You have this like conquer the world in a day energy, which I'm so envious of. I wish I had a little bit of it. And you go, go, go. And I always look at you and I'm like, what drives him? So what drives you to push yourself to keep going and, and showing up? Because you have been showing up. Don't take that away from yourself. I have real love for the people that receive what I do in a positive way for their own lives. Like I really do feel like a necessity to serve the people. It feels like there's so much inauthenticity and so much selfishness and so much that drives people to do things for the wrong reason. When I really like, I used to think it was because I wanted to be the best. And I was like, well, Maybe it's to achieve the same things that your idols had or like, you know, be talked about like that. And then I realized I'm in a day and age where every single person is a celebrity, even the person who like walks their dog with like 15 dogs on a leash. <laughs> Too. It's the video of it. They're, they have their own <laughs> viral moment for a minute. Like the dog yeah. walker's famous, right? So like, totally. I don't even like... <laughs> I'm just saying anybody, right? Like you can do anything at any moment in this day and age and like- The skateboarding guy and the Fleetwood Mac song, oh, like yeah, that's exactly. a perfect example. Like you could become legendary for 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 taking out the trash the right, right yeah. way. So I kind of removed myself from thinking like in that perspective. And then I just started looking at all of the people I was affecting, like I saw kids buy guitars because of me. I saw kids get tattoos because of me. I saw kids feel comfortable looking like wearing clothes that would that society would make you feel uncomfortable wearing because of me. Like, and there was a comfortability that came with a new wave of fans that, and I don't even know if I should call people fans. It's just like, I don't even view them as fans either. Like I just, they're just like, people that stumbled across my 
my being and related to it. So I, I don't know. It's almost like I just feel a heavy sense of to serve while I'm here. And it's a shame that sometimes we get caught in like viewing like an artist isn't like, you know, isn't doing enough because I'm not outwardly responding all the time, but I am outwardly responding. I'm just doing it with my art and I'm doing less talking and more walking. That's the way that it should be. And I think that's one of the things that I um, personally love about you the most in this conversation. I'm a bigger fan now. Um, you're a, you're real, you have the heart of a warrior and that's what I see when I look at you. And I'm, I'm very stoked that we're having this conversation. So thank you. I'm gonna ask you two questions that fans sent in that I promised. Um, and then I'm going to I'm going to set you free. Um, one of them is what are you doing to make contact with your fans through the pandemic? It started with quarantine sessions, which was where I would just make music in my house and release it immediately without any approval from labels or management. <laughs> and I would just l let it go. And there was something really pure about that. And I think maybe like, you know, Instagram lives are really cool and I should yeah. bring those back and. I, I, I'll, I'll be better this, this year about being, um, back active. And I, and I guess like me being the way I am, I can't, I, I can't change it. So it's not like I can just stay hidden away until I am confident in myself. You know what else you've done though? You've given us your art. Like I listen to tickets to my downfall a lot, especially a lot lately. And so in a way, that's kind of what you're doing to make contact with your fans is you're giving us you're giving us your truth and you're giving us these songs that happen to sound amazing, like melody wise, all of it. They just it all comes together. And in our quiet moments, when you're not watching, when you can't see us in the front row, that's what we're doing. We're hanging out with your music and it makes us feel good. So I think that is something that you do that you uh, I'm going to give you credit for. How's that, buddy? That's really cool. And and. and maybe I'm used to touring so much that I figured that that's the way I would get in front of people and, 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 you know, talk to them. I know every interaction that I've had lately, I've just been like, so embracing of people coming up and I'm really happy to share moments with people. And like, I'm more aware than ever that those interactions really mean something to people. I remember there was this, I was shooting this movie last month and, I was in this town that's in the middle of Georgia, right, four hours from Atlanta. So it's not like a major hub or anything. And there was this 10 year old kid who was across the street and he was he was screaming. He was like, hey, man, will you sign my helmet? And I ended up finding out he's like a little like dirt bike rider. Right? He's like 10 years old. Oh. And the guy there was a, like a like a a covid officer or something. And he was like, don't go over there. Don't don't touch the kid. Don't do it. And I was like. I'm not turning my back on anybody, let alone a 10 year old kid who this might inspire him for the rest of his life, like to like believe in looking up to somebody because that's the choices that we have right now, you know, like let them scare us away from human moments or, or choose to, you know, make a 10 year old's life. Like, how do you know he's ever gonna even get out of that town and ever meet anybody? Like, what if I'm the one person the in the entire life that the he met thing. where he's like, oh, there's a guy, but like, you know, like, and, and, and I ruin that whole interaction for him. I'm never, I'm not gonna do that. And as far as my fans, I gotta let them know that I sit there and think about going on live on IG almost every day. I almost click the button, almost click it. And then I just see that, <laughs> I see the mirror image of, you know, when you're, when you're on the phone and it's like pointing yeah. towards your face yeah, yeah. and then I see my face and I'm like, I'm not good enough. And then I just <laughs> hang it up and I never do it. So I, 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 it's, 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 it just comes from, I'm in a weird place of just thinking too much or something. I don't know, but I'll, listen, I'll, listen, new friend. Um, I, I, I can relate to that more than, you know, and we can have this conversation some other day in real life, but just know that you are good enough. And some of the things, there are lyrics on that record, on the, the latest record on Take Us To My Downfall that I, that I could have written myself. And because you wrote them for me, I don't have to let anybody know that they're mine, that they're my feelings. And I get to ride that wave because of you. So whenever you see that image, just know that somebody out there wants to see it. You don't always have to jump on IG Live. It's just 
you know, because sometimes we miss you when you're gone more. It's when it's those little games. But man, Kels, just know you are loved. I'm going to ask you one more question from the fan um, who is so excited. It's from Savannah, who won our SoCal Helpful Honda Dealers Question Contest. And she said, if you could perform one song right this second, what would it be and why? The thing about Take Us to My Downfall is that it's like, 26 minutes or 34 minutes or something like that so it's almost like i could just run it front to back really easy and uh uh, so i mean that would be my first option if i had to narrow it down to one song probably lonely just run that back and to back to back or or uh or nothing i listened to that three times inside nothing inside's fun or like or dude, like just drunk face, right? Just put a smile on everybody's face. Such a good, like freeing track. Um, what is maybe one intention that you have for the future? And then the next time you and I talk, we'll talk about um, how far that intention went. So it's almost like we get we, we get to pick up where we left off next time we see each other. Okay. Okay, uh, so what is one intention for the future? Break the mold of everything I just did. Okay and piss people off all over again. (laughs) I hope you see the light, like you just lit up. You just lit up when you said that. And um, I don't, you know what? I don't doubt that you're gonna do that, my friend. I don't doubt. I keep calling you my friend because I think it's the most respectful thing to say. Yeah, I think Um, it's awesome. I appreciate having a friend and I I, I like can feel in the universe that I have many. And um, I was talking yesterday about how I really am choosing to not acknowledge negative and and haters and stuff when I have so many actual people that care and and love. And and even when I say uh, break the mold and piss people off all over again, I just mean make them think again, make them have a moment of like, this artist is so polarizing. I, I, I have to tune in. I have to see what, because I don't want to be bored with an artist. And I think, you know, Kanye is a great example of that. We all just are, we all, we all have moments of sitting at dinner tables and talking about Kanye and, and, and being like, I didn't like this, or I love this, or why is he doing that? But I'll tell you what, man, we're still talking about him and we know that there's greatness in there and behind it. And it, it's like, I, I, to be a part of that club of, you know, when Prince passed and seeing how, everything that even in the even in the 80s when maybe everyone was like this doesn't make any sense seeing how it made so much sense in the years leading up to his his death and the years after like that's a legacy worth fighting for and it's not going to be easy and i'm aware of that so i'm um yeah i'm happy to keep breaking the mold one bonus question. I'm making a playlist with a bunch of music nerds and we've been talking about what's the most beautiful song that we've ever heard. Not your favorite song. Yeah. The most beautiful song to the point that it's almost too emotional to listen to the whole way through. And we're, what we're doing is we're compiling a huge playlist, the most beautiful playlist in the world. If I ask you what's the most beautiful song you've ever heard off the cuff, what you got? Probably High and Dry by Radiohead. Ooh, good one. I got a I got a Radiohead one too, but it's mine is uh, Reckner. And if you listen to it, it'll t- it'll take you. It'll just it hurts. It's be- it's Reckner. So if you have the time, throw that on. And I then the next time, time, yeah, the next time that we talk, hopefully it'll be in person. Hopefully it'll be at a show. And I just wanted to say thanks. I'm a big fan, and I never know what I'm gonna get. And I I am. Um, this is really cool because the next time I see you, I'm probably going to give you a hug, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. I'm, please. Oh, wait, okay. I, have, I have one question for you because sure. I, didn't, I didn't answer it very well. Okay. I, like, just pretend I'm Savannah. Okay, if, if you were me and you could perform a song right now off that album, which, which one would you do? Lonely, because that's the one I listened to yeah, today okay. three or four yeah. times. So it I, would I, be lonely. We both, we both had the right answer then. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I think that that's uh, just the term alone, lonely, because of what we've been through. We're going on the year of being in this weird lockdown situation where we, we haven't really had human contact. I think the emotion behind it and the title itself, people can relate to. And I think it would feel really therapeutic to sing that out loud with everything I have right now. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Bye, my friend. Have a great, great night. Okay. All right. You too. Later. Bye.